MMA Fighting here speaking with uh, Miles John at the UFC 247 Media Day uh, here in Houston. Before we get into the actual fight, though, uh, your nickname is uh, Chapo, if I'm Chapo, not. So uh, what, what's the genesis of this nickname? You know, I've actually been Chapo since I was in, like five years old. Really? Believe it or not, I've been a little bit short my whole life, and Chapo means shorty. Yep. So it's been a family nickname. A lot of people think it has association with El Chapo. Uh -huh. No association at all. But I've been, I'm the original Chapo. Been that, been Chapo since five. So. so there was no thought of like, I should probably change my nickname right now because of this guy. There was, I mean, every time somebody says like El Chapo, I correct them. Like, there's no L, it's just Chapo. Um, so I make sure people know there's no association, but I'm not gonna change my nickname. Like, I've been that my whole life. My grandma, my grandmas that passed have called me that. So I'm gonna stick with the Chapo. Now, speaking of your actual fighting career, you are part of this Fortis MMA like boom. Uh, so what is the secret? Like, a lot of people, like, where did this gym come from? Just kind of emerged, like, so what is the secret sauce, I guess, of Fortis MMA right now? I can't tell you exactly what's going on behind those doors, but I can tell you that it's just a lot of hard work. And the main ingredients is just pure work. You know, we're just grinding there. Um, we believe that we are the best gym in the world since we are Octagon MMA all the way up to Fortis. We used to go to LFA cards and sweep the whole card 6-0 and with six finishes. So we've always known that we we're going to be at this level. It was just a time will tell type of thing. And we're still just showing people who we are. You know, until we have some belts on that wall, we really don't see ourselves as doing much of anything. Like some UFC wins, cool. That's awesome. But uh, we want some belts. So we're just keeping our head down and working. Do you have a sort of um, a rivalry amongst the gym over who's going to get the belt first and put it on the like who's going to get the first belt for the wall you know there's a it's all it's all good vibes in there you know there's no egos but yeah people are racing for it i tell jeff and carlos all the time I'm like hey you guys are racing for that belt like who's going to get that title shot first there's no like no. bets like hey i get the belt first you have to do it like this it's a, it's like it's some joking around like that yeah you know um but everybody's just working for a common purpose so uh so yeah, there's people clown around with like who's gonna get the shot first, and we'll see what happens. Is there any pressure fighting in Texas and represent like continuing this wave of, of uh, success you guys have, or is it just another day in the office for you? There's no pressure, man. It's just nice. I love fighting close to home. You know, I was happy for the experience of traveling to Canada for my UFC debut. I've always kind of pictured having to travel somewhere and fight somebody in their home territory for my debut. So I got that out of the way, and now I'm just happy to be close to home. You know, happy to have the people around me and um, all this stuff that I'm used to here. So it's been nice. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you are, are you, you're undefeated, correctly? Correct? Yeah. So does that O carry any pressure to you? Because I've, I spoke with John Jones years ago, and you said one of the best things that happened to him was that one, because now he doesn't have the pressure of being undefeated anymore. Does, does that O carry any added pressure? It doesn't carry any pressure to me. You know, I'm not really thinking about it. Um, I do, I do like it to the right. I love that O, but I'm not really, when it gets this close to the fight, I'm not thinking about that at all. You know, I'm just thinking about my opponent and I'm just thinking about the fight that I need to fight and that's pretty much it. And you are fighting uh, Mario Bautista on Saturday. So what do you make of him and his opponent and the skill set he brings to the octagon? He's a good fighter. You know, he's, he's a well-rounded fighter, but I think his main attribute is just his sheer toughness. You know, he's a tough, gritty fighter and he's just gonna come after you. So I'm prepared for that and I'm ready to boogie. So I'll, I'll, a lot of people ask you, like, what's your prediction on Saturday, this and that. So I'll ask you something different. And one year from now, so February 2021, where are you sitting in the UFC? Top 15. So top 15 and then top 10, I assume 2022, and then so on and so forth? Correct. Top 15 by the end of 2020. Um, by the end of 2021, I'll be right there ready for a title shot. Do you, I, I know fighters don't like to look past their opponents, but do you visualize, like, I beat Mario on Saturday, then I want to fight this guy, then I want to fight this guy. Do you lay a path out, or do you just take them as they come one day at a time? I do lay a path out. Um, in some of my past interviews, I said that I wanted Cole Smith as my debut, and then after that fight, I said Mario Bautista would be a great fight to have my second fight, and I got a name ready for my third yeah. fight uh, once I beat Bautista, so I'm not looking past Bautista at all. Bautista's going to come ready to throw down, and he's going to come try and take my head off, and I'm going to do the same, but uh, once I take him out, I got somebody lined up. Thank you so much and good luck on Saturday. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.